Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today we're going to talk about one of those big badass moments from space research history. In August of 1960, Joe Kittinger stepped onto the Project Excelsior balloon, which carried him to almost 103,000 feet, whereupon he stepped off the highest step in the world and parachuted back to Earth. This was a part of a test which was specifically investigating a new parachute system which would help pilots that were flying the new generations of high-performance aircraft which could fly at really high altitudes. Uh, he, of course, these records would stand for a few decades. However, uh, Felix Baumgartner and later uh, Alan Eustace have both since gone even higher. However, unlike those that followed, Joe did this entire thing without wearing a full pressure suit. He was wearing a partial pressure suit, specifically a Dave Clark MC3 partial pressure suit. Now, this differs from a full pressure suit because the entire body isn't kept inside an atmosphere. So, uh, you know, let's rewind a little. When you're traveling to higher and higher altitudes, the biggest problem is hypoxia, that is the lack of oxygen in the blood. At ground level, you have one pressure, atmospheric pressure obviously, with a 20% oxygen. And as you go higher and higher, eventually you reach a point where that 20% of oxygen is not enough to safely sustain your body. So you can start then breathing pure oxygen. And that means you've got 100% of the oxygen atmosphere, but a lower pressure. You can probably work fine down to say one fifth of an atmosphere, you would think, right? Because 20% is one fifth. But in practice, it's more like one third of an atmosphere because it changes the way that the uh, gases are absorbed into the blood. So you can comfortably fly with pure oxygen up to about 30,000 feet, I believe. If you want to go higher than that, then you need to start using something where the oxygen is forced into the lungs at higher than ambient pressure. Now, that's kind of interesting from a physiological point of view because you know, normally when you breathe in, you have to kind of work. Now, the system is actually forcing air into your lungs and you actually have to work to exhale instead. So it's an interesting reversal and it can prove uh, kind of tiring for new pilots doing this. But that'll get you up to about 40,000 feet. Above that, well, above that, you can't raise the pressure of the oxygen inside the lungs high enough without risking damage to the lungs. So you then need to compress the lungs to stop them expanding. And you would do this perhaps mechanically, right? That is, you would have uh, air bladders in a tight-fitting suit that would hold your body together so that as the air was pushed in, uh, your body would push against, or this stuff would push against your body and keep you in shape. But then what happens is that then pushes the blood out to your arms and legs. And so you need pressurization all over those. And your gloves, you know, you need gloves and feet and everything. Now, obviously, it, when we do this in space, you have a full atmosphere covering your entire body. But early on in, you know, in suit technology, you know, that wasn't well developed as a concept. The first pressure suits were kind of uh, interesting affairs where they hadn't quite figured out how to uh, make joints that worked. Wiley Post is a famous example. He built a suit with his, of his own design because he wanted to fly his aircraft higher and hopefully faster to make it competitive in a race. Now he couldn't pressurize the cabin because that would make the plane too heavy, so he came up with the suit idea and he found, of course, that it was very hard to turn his arms and legs because he blew up like a balloon. The suit took on the maximum volume possible and that kind of held his arms and legs in a particular position. So um, yeah, these weren't great options. They were also very heavy. So when your know, World War II came along and pilots were starting to fly higher and faster, there was a little bit of research, but it wasn't, didn't really happen until after the war. After the war, um, you had pilots that were flying aircraft that now had pressurized uh, cockpits, but they wanted to have something that would keep the pilots safe should there be a pressure failure, suits that would get them down. And so the get me down pressure suit was kind of a concept was born. And initially these were partial pressure suits. The reason being that partial pressure suits were more popular was because they were easier to design than the full pressure suits due to the ballooning, uh, they were a lot lighter 
And also there was the notion that they could potentially be used as G-suits as well by having the pressurization uh, increase in the legs during high G maneuvers. The MC3 suit that Joe Kittinger wore, the way it worked was you had a bunch of air bladders around the chest, you had a full helmet with a neck seal that would be uh, providing one third pressure pure oxygen. The arms and the legs, the sleeves of those would have laces that ran around the outside and the laces would then be wrapped around uh, an air hose. As you went to lower and lower pressures, that air hose would expand and the laces wrapped around them would be pulled tight. That would keep the arms tight and you would have a similar mechanic in the hands. And actually, I think they just tended to just use you know, tightly laced boots on the feet, if I remember correctly. So that's what Joe Kittinger wore. Uh, his body was essentially exposed to the near vacuum. Uh, his suit was modified to make him comfortable. He wore two very heavy insulating layers. He had his parachute system as well, which uh, you know, made the whole thing look rather big and heavy, but it wasn't a proper spacesuit. Now, you might have heard about this concept, of course, talked about uh, in the context of futuristic spacesuits. They're called space activity suits. Uh, and the reason, of course, is that in sci-fi, having tight-fitting uh, spacesuits makes your protagonist look a whole lot more awesome. Uh, <laughs> so you'll find this in video games and movies and books. The, you know, it's a, a great concept which has actually been around for a long time. It's not a new thing as many, you know, stories on this seem to suggest. Indeed, yeah, once some of the earliest uh, footage of people sitting on the edge of space were done in these partial pressure suits. Uh, I gotta point out actually the downside of these is that it's very hard to pressurize the entire body uniformly when you have these, uh, these systems. And so blood will actually collect at the joints, so you'll get it in the elbows and in the armpits and the crotch, and the blood will kind of just collect there and you'll get bruises if you use it for far too long. You know, Joe's flight, it took an hour and a half, and about, you know, I don't know, part way up, he found that his glove wasn't working properly. The hose, the pressurization system had got unhooked, and blood was starting to pour into his hand. So his right hand inflated, he couldn't use it. But of course, being that he was a proper American badass, he didn't tell his ground crew this because he didn't want them to tell him to come back down. He wanted to go all the way up as high as possible and then jump out and test this thing. And that wasn't the only problem that Project Excelsior encountered. In uh, the first jump in November of 1959, his drogue chute got entangled and he ended up in a configuration where he spun up. It was spinning at over 200 RPM and the blood kind of rushed to his head and feet and he ended up redding out for a lot of the flight. But eventually his system, you know, he fell into thicker atmosphere, stabilized and completed the jump uh, safely, obviously. Second jump again went to like 75,000 feet, but it was, yeah, the one that's famous is Project Excelsior 3, which was over 100 and, almost 103,000 feet, depending upon the measurements. I think uh, the official height was 102,800 feet. It was, oddly enough, it was never actually submitted to the FAI for ratification as a record, so all we have is this amazing footage, right? Anyway, even after the development of full pressure suits, partial pressure suits have continued to be used. Indeed, the space shuttle program after the Challenger disaster, they uh, required, started to require crew to wear uh, suits again. And the first you know, dozen or so flights were made with something called the launch entry suit, which was a partial pressure suit. Later, this was of course replaced with by the advanced crew escape suit, which was a full pressure suit. But yeah, I mean, it's the technology which exists outside of sci-fi and maybe one day astronauts and space heroes of the future will be flying wearing these kind of things. Until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.